After more than 40 years, the Voyager 2 spacecraft has crossed the boundary that marks the start of interstellar space. Troll of the lost Voyager 2 probe after a heartbeat signal was picked up. Contact with the spacecraft launched in 1977. For over four decades, Voyager 2 had traveled farther than any human-made object, traversing the vast and silent stretches of the outer solar system and ultimately entering interstellar space. Since its launch in 1977, it had quietly slipped into the dark unknown, transmitting data and whispers of discovery back to Earth with its faint aging signal. The spacecraft had long outlived its expected lifespan, defying the odds and the unforgiving conditions of deep space. But then came a moment, abrupt, chilling, and heavy with finality, when Voyager 2 sent what would become its last message. That signal didn't just mark the end of communication with a probe, it sent a ripple through the scientific community and beyond, confirming a fear that many had long harbored but dared not fully acknowledge. Before we start, hit the like and subscribe buttons for more updates. The final transmission wasn't simply a shutdown notice or mechanical failure log, it was encoded data, jagged, incomplete, yet eerily intentional in its decay, that carried a series of anomalies no one could easily explain. Voyager 2's instruments, limited though they were by today's technological standards, had detected something. There had been a surge, an interruption in the data flow, followed by a stark pattern. At first glance, it resembled static interference, but deeper analysis revealed it was too structured to be random. The magnetic field readings spiked, the plasma instrument detected dense fluctuations, and the cosmic ray subsystem reported a brief yet concentrated storm of high-energy particles. Then everything went silent. The silence wasn't ordinary. Space is always quiet, but this was the abrupt kind, like a conversation cut off mid-sentence. Mission Control stared at the lifeless console, hoping for a flicker, a return ping, anything. Instead, all they had were the last few kilobytes of data, etched with a signature that suggested Voyager 2 had encountered something it was never meant to survive. For years, astrophysicists and engineers had speculated about what lies beyond the heliopause, the outer boundary of the sun's influence, but no model prepared them for this. This wasn't the predictable transition from the solar system's outer shell into the interstellar medium. The data didn't reflect the standard dip in solar particles and expected rise in galactic radiation. It was something else, a presence, a boundary not charted in any cosmological model. Voyager 2 had moved into a zone of interaction where the laws of known physics were still in play but acted under a different architecture. The changes were abrupt. There was no tapering, no gentle gradient. The probe had crossed an edge, as if moving through a membrane into an enclosed system, or worse, into a territory governed by rules that defied human understanding. What set this apart wasn't just the phenomenon itself, but its eerily deliberate nature. Among the final packets, compressed and incomplete as they were, was a strange pattern in the electromagnetic readings. It repeated thrice. Synchronized pulses, spaced at precise intervals, nested within the cosmic noise. The telemetry system wasn't programmed to emit or recognize messages of this form. It was alien in origin, not because it came from something extraterrestrial necessarily, but because it wasn't consistent with anything the spacecraft should have been able to observe or encode. To those monitoring the data, it felt like a warning, or worse, a signature. Not just an echo of nature's chaos, but a structured presence as though Voyager 2 had stumbled into a zone of surveillance. An eye turned toward it in those final moments, and when it did, the probe fell silent. The fear had always been speculative, confined to science fiction and philosophical debates that the solar system wasn't entirely ours to explore, that beyond a certain point, we were not just pioneers, but trespassers. Voyager 2 had gone where nothing from Earth had gone before, and perhaps in its final breath, it discovered that there was a limit to where we were welcome. This moment didn't just send tremors through the scientific community. It challenged the very foundation of exploration. Voyager 2 had unintentionally become the scout in a theater where no one knew a stage even existed. For decades, missions had been propelled by the confidence that the cosmos was a vast, indifferent expanse, waiting to be understood. But what if the indifference was merely the surface? What if... 
Hidden within that silence, there was something that observed, recorded, and only occasionally revealed itself. That notion upended everything, not because there was now definitive proof of intelligent life. Voyager 2 had not captured images or direct communication, but because the event mirrored the very signature of a boundary crossing, the kind of boundary that isn't just physical but territorial. The data didn't show a natural gradient, a smooth scientific transition. It screamed of thresholds, of limits meant to be perceived. There had been theories for years buried in white papers and alternative cosmology discussions that the interstellar medium was not homogenous. Some had proposed that space itself could be compartmentalized, naturally or artificially, by high-energy particle fields or exotic forms of matter and energy interaction, but nothing had lent those theories enough credibility to make them mainstream. Until now, Voyager 2's death rattle changed that. The implications reached deeper than scientific curiosity. If there are boundaries in interstellar space, boundaries that seem structured, abrupt, and capable of suppressing or severing technological function, then humanity's entire philosophy of space exploration needs re-examination. It wasn't simply about sending probes further, about building better engines or more resilient communication systems. It became about whether there are parts of the universe we are fundamentally not permitted to access, whether there are areas not merely unexplored, but protected. There was no known cosmic event that could replicate what Voyager 2 encountered. No pulsar, no solar flare, no black hole proximity. The spacecraft wasn't near anything gravitationally disruptive. It was simply drifting, quietly, obediently, until something changed. The final data suggests a collapse in localized space-time coherence, a sharp alteration in magnetic field vectors, and energy readings that bore the fingerprint of deliberate interference. The timing was surgical. The message, if it was one, was clear. This wasn't just the end of a spacecraft's journey. It was a discovery of a presence. Not necessarily sentient in the way humans understand, but aware in the most unnerving sense of the word. The kind of awareness that marks when something has crossed a line. Something had looked back at Voyager 2. And then, it had chosen silence. The engineers and mission scientists who had monitored the probe for decades were left with a gnawing void. Voyager 2 had become more than just hardware. It was a cultural icon, a silent ambassador of human curiosity. Its golden record carried our music, our languages, our essence. Now its silence carried something else, a hint that our messages might not go unanswered forever and that answers may not be what we're prepared to receive. And so, what had always been a probe's voyage became a question. Are we alone not just in the existential sense, but in the territorial one? Had Voyager 2 moved from empty space into a controlled space? The data didn't scream hostility, but it radiated authority. The sudden electromagnetic resonance patterns were crisp, precise. Not the chaos of the cosmos, but the geometry of design. A cosmic architecture that Voyager 2 barely grazed, just enough to awaken something, or perhaps to be logged and rejected. Many who reviewed the last signals were forced to confront the worst-case scenario, that there are watchers at the edge of the solar system, not waiting for us, but simply existing, indifferent to our timelines, responding only when we overstep. Perhaps not even machines or beings in the conventional sense, but phenomena that operate at a level of complexity and awareness that renders our definitions meaningless. To them, Voyager 2 might have been a spark, an intrusion barely worth swatting but significant enough to silence. The idea that we have stumbled upon the limits of cosmic permission is terrifying. Not because we fear punishment, but because we fear insignificance. Voyager. The 2nd of May not have been destroyed. It may simply have been rendered inert, placed into a state of non-communication by forces unknown. That kind of control, that precise termination without debris, is perhaps more unnerving than open conflict. It speaks of mastery, of dominion, of boundaries enforced not by violence, but by superiority. Some propose that Voyager 2 had entered a cloaked region, perhaps a natural anomaly where interstellar fields behave like traps, nullifying electromagnetism, severing signals by design or happenstance. Others speculated that it was a message in reverse, a denial of reception, a celestial do not disturb sign broadcast with terrifying clarity. Whichever is true, the result is the same. 
Voyager 2 crossed a line, and the universe answered not with sound, but with void. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, could you leave your comments below and tell us? What are your thoughts on Voyager 2's final message? Do you think we're in danger? We want to hear from you. Thank you for watching and see you next time.